So if you've been listening for a while, you might know that I went on a month-long sabbatical to start the year. Hello everyone, this is Rev Brad. Well, I'm back now and into my second week of working. I'm getting Soccer Chaplains United ready for 2020 and preparing for the MLS season and serving the Colorado Rapids soccer team where I serve as a volunteer chaplain. Today, I wanted to share a little bit about my sabbatical and offer some thoughts and encouragement for you to perhaps consider in terms of creating a rhythm and maybe even taking a sabbatical at some point in your life and career. But more on that in a minute. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! So one of the most frequently asked questions I've been fielding since being back from sabbatical is, what was it like? Well, in a word, it was restful. In another word, it was refreshing. With some broad strokes, most of my attention during this time was toward spiritual rest and renewal. It was about learning some new rhythms and reorienting myself with some old forgotten rhythms. For three of the four weeks, I was able to get up into the mountains of Colorado and uh, be in some different settings to rest and retreat. I exercised a lot during the sabbatical. If I felt like a nap or was tired, I took one. You know, actually, I thought I would nap more, but I only took three during my time. Uh, Maybe next time I'll take more. One of the biggest challenges to the sabbatical was this, was saying no. There was a former athlete who came into town in January and he needed help moving and cleaning out a storage space. Usually that would have been me, front and center. I would have been there helping, but I had to say no. There were also some good friends who needed help moving and cleaning out their home. I had to say no to them as well. It was really tough. I learned later there were several neat opportunities that came up during the sabbatical, but essentially I had to pass on them. I had my email totally shut off. At different points, I would put the do not disturb auto reply text message on from my phone. And it was really difficult because I felt that someone might feel as though I was letting them down. And so I really was challenged with that idea of saying no and that idea of resting. Um, Also too, I was really curious during this time. I was curious as to what was going on. There there were different situations and needs that I had been praying for and people that I was praying for, uh, you know, players that were looking for a new contract or a new team. And I was really curious to find out what's going on. Where are they at? How have things gone? Is there any way I can help them? Is there can I even pray more specifically for them? But I had to let go of a lot of those things. The start of my sabbatical time saw me spend a couple nights and days at a local Jesuit retreat center. I met with a spiritual director a few times, and it was really neat because the beginning text for me was Mark six thirty one. Jesus is with his disciples, and they just returned from traveling and serving people, and they've just gotten some really bad news about John, Jesus' cousin, being killed. And the verse, Mark 6, 31, goes like this. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he, Jesus, said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. I'm going to say Jesus' words one more time. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. For me, for this to be the starting text from the lectionary, that's just a fancy word for a book that gives you particular readings for the Bible for a particular day. To have the start of my sabbatical be Mark 6, 31, it was a huge affirmation to me that God was inviting me into this time, into this particular space of taking a rest. All my wrestlings, my concerns, many of things which I've written about already or spoken about, It was almost as if God was saying this to me, hey, Brad, I know you've been busy. I know it's been busy. You you haven't even had time to have lunch. Let's go. Let's get away. Let's get some rest. And as I sat with those words for a few days and reflected, there became this sort of peace at letting go of all the things that had seemed to collect around the heart of my concern. The invitation was there. 
God had seen my own need, and, and this time was an invitation into His rest. One of the passages that became a bit of a guardrail for me during the sabbatical time was Isaiah thirty fifteen. Let me read it to you. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Let me read that again. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. To be honest, when I read that, I felt some conviction. I have not had the best rhythms of rest or quietness. My personality type is such that I feel that I must always be on the go. I must always be doing. I must always be striving. Because the moment when I don't is a moment when I fill in the blank. I'm irresponsible. Um, maybe I'm, I'm not living up to what I need to do. I'm not being a good provider for my family. I'm not being faithful to God, to others. Whether it's an unseen pressure that I put on myself, or it's my own history and background, or, or maybe it's just because of my role and my vocation right now. I, I have this adage that's often been lurking in the recesses of my mind. And I say, the, I say this to myself so many times. I say, if it's to be, it's up to me. And so I put all this stuff on me and I say, I, I've got to do this all. For the, for the athlete and his family who's been dismissed from the team, they've been waived and they're looking for the next one. And like, I, I just feel this pressure, like either it's through my prayer power or it's through my connections or something. I, I need to help them find the next place or I need to stand in the gap with um, helping them in some way. And so I've, I've loaded myself and, and tended to take all these burdens on me. Even as I talk right now, I can feel this tightness in my shoulders and my, in my neck. And so the invitation of God is into quietness, into rest, into uh, this trust in Him. Stillness, rest, quietness, those are antithetical to my personality and, and to my vocational place right now. So what happens when you strip away the peace that takes up the majority of your day? What happens when you rest from the work you do 10 plus hours a day? What happens when you silence the phone and, and you're not getting the emails and there's not as many demands and, and there's less pressing you in on all sides? You know, I imagine for some people, it might be horrifying to be left alone uh, with their own thoughts, with silence, or, or, or for some people, even, even more so, to be left alone with only themselves and God and silence. I mean, I struggled with the still silent moments myself. I wanted action. I wanted to hear from God. I wanted to see something. I remember I was sitting on a hillside. I was kind of reflecting and meditating and praying through some things. And I kept wanting to see some wildlife or something. I wanted to see deer moving in the bush or something. I wanted to have tangible productivity, even in my, in my sabbatical time. I was like, I, I should read a lot of books. I should, I should write. I should... I wanted to quantify. I wanted to qualify my time. I, I, I even kind of said to myself, I was like, yeah, this would be good for a report on my sabbatical. Let me write a book or, or something, anything. I need to be productive. But God's word to me was, no, Brad, you need to rest. And so a lot of my time of Sabbath and sabbatical was filled with stillness. You know, maybe even my favorite moment or one of my favorite moments was sitting in front of a fireplace in the mountains. The house all quiet. I'm still. The only thing making noise or movement was the crackling of the logs and watching the flames dance and warm. And sure, you know, there was, there was a part of me that was praying, maybe praying to be revitalized, praying for others at times, praying for myself. But I was listening for God. I would say the fourth week was maybe the most mixed of emotions for me. It was, I didn't get up into the mountains or anything. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on at home and, and just trying to help, help around the house. Um, for me too, I knew the time was ending and yet I desired more. I desired more rest. A couple friends and mentors suggested asking for more time. Uh, one of my friends even said, will anyone die if you're gone for two more weeks? And I said, of course not. But, um, there's a time when we return. There's a time when a season and a chapter's over. So, and, and I kind of felt the sabbatical time needed to end and, shouldn't be extended. But I, I do think there were some helpful lessons learned and some new rhythms of rest that were, um, that need to be put in place. And so here are a few key lessons I learned, at least for me. 
I need to rest and I need to rest more frequently. You know, there's the daily rest of, of going to bed, just going to bed on time, waking up at a certain time. There's a weekly rest of taking a Sabbath, taking a rest. And for me, maybe Sunday's got to be that day. You know, I, I really have to guard that. Um, resting in a monthly cycle or a monthly way, I, I've not really done that or yearly. Um, I take vacations, but um, vacations are a lot of work sometimes when you've got, um, you know, a, a family the size of mine. Um, and, and taking a sabbatical every seven years, what does that look like? So developing out more of a rest rhythm is one of my key takeaways from the sabbatical. A second one was, I need to pray more. I read a couple good, challenging books, and, and I was encouraged by an old friend, C.S. Lewis, that my prayer life needed to have a major upgrade in terms of time spent and my attentions. A third thing, I need to relearn the practices of self-care and soul care. You know, the pressures that I've felt under or have made me push uh, some of those things aside really make me a hypocrite because I preach it to the people that I serve. I tell athletes and their families, I tell coaches, I tell managers, executives, hey, you need to get away. You need rest. You need to uh, take some time off. You need to invest in your family. You need to rest and in, invest into some things that are life-giving. Well, I'm telling everybody else that, but I'm not doing it myself. So I uh, can't keep doing that. Finally, another thing, a uh, key lesson for me was just learning to surrender perfectionism. I, I don't know that this will ever go away from me. Uh, it's so wired into my DNA and my personality. I think it's going to be a daily cross for me to be a bit, to be, to be bearing, but at least I'm aware of it. I'm aware that I, I just, I fall into this trap where I want everything to be perfect and, and I get paralyzed if things can't be, or if, if things are less than. So here's a bit of an encouragement for you. I don't know your situation or your circumstances. I don't know your family or vocational means, but what would a sabbatical look like for you? How long has it been since you rested? How long has it been since you were totally still? If you're a Christian, especially, I, I want to encourage you. Do you realize that Christ's call and invitation into rest isn't something just for pastors and academicians? No, sabbatical isn't just for the wealthy and well-to-do. Now, I don't know how it may happen, but I, leave, I believe that it can, and it will be so life-giving. God's command to let the land rest in Exodus 23 is a command filled with potential and promise for you and for me. And while it may seem really difficult and a leap of faith, I want to recommend it to you for the sake of your physical, your spiritual, and emotional health. You know, I, I've, I've often thought, well, I'll rest when I'm retired, but don't wait until you're 72 and retired to enter into rest. Plan for it now. Save for it. Prepare for it. Do it in the, in the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the yearly, the, 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 you know, every seven years kind of way. Do it in some rhythm that really is helpful. You know, maybe if you're a young footballer, I, I've thought about this, it might mean taking an entire year off football. I, I, I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying, but Rev, I want to be a pro. I can't do that. I can't take a year off of soccer if I, if I do that. If you're a professional athlete, I, I get it. I, I know you're, you're saying, no way. Rev, I've only got so long to play this game anyway. I can't give up a year. If you're a coach, an executive, I, I can see your eye rolling at me and, and the disbelief right now because I know your job is on the line year after year after year. But here's the thing. God's bigger, and he knows more of what you and I need than we know ourselves. You know, recently, a former coach who was dismissed from the Rapids, he gave an interview, and he shared about the time that he had as he had been dismissed and fired. Essentially, he had like two years off, and he talked about what he did during that time. He said, you know, there's really two paths. People either jump back in or, or they take some time to reflect, and, and for him, it was a time of rest and reflection, and that time away from the game uh, really was life giving for him. And I recall, you know, just kind of looking at the time of the interview, he didn't have a job or a role, but soon after it was announced he was joining a coaching staff, you know, maybe something was in the works, but, but two years away from the game. And he shared in his own words that there's this reestablishing of relationship and connections, most importantly with his wife and children. And I can guarantee you that that time will go much farther in life for him and for his family than any success or accomplishment that he could have in the most beautiful game. Well, in closing, I want to reread 
the words of Isaiah as an exhortation to you and to me. And then I want to read the invitation that Jesus gives to his friends. Please receive these both as a challenge and as a prayer. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Jesus said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. This is Rev Bread, praying rest for you and your family, coming to you from the Touchline.